Today in crypto, I want to lay out the case for why I believe Ethereum is currently massively undervalued. From the growing scalability of the network to the parabolic rise of decentralized finance to really just the network itself exploding at an incredible rate. That and much, much more. The Crypto Lark. This is where you subscribe for all of the hottest and all of the latest happening out here in the wild, wild land of crypto. Also, if you still need help figuring out all of the basics, like what is Ethereum, how to buy and send and store your Ethereum, as well as top tips for success, things like building a portfolio and all of that, then check out my course, Cryptocurrency Explained. There's a link down below where you can learn more. So, Ethereum has been doing some nice little price moves over the last few weeks, but I really think that this is just the start for Ethereum because there are some massive things going on that will continue to propel Ethereum forward and which will continue to make the price of Ethereum absolutely soar over the coming years. So let's start off with this recent news from Vitalik. Buterin. In a tweet, he said, while everyone wasn't looking, the initial deployment of Ethereum's layer two scaling strategy has basically succeeded. Wow. Big words, Vitalik. This basically means that now we have high speed, low fee, high security transactions here now on Ethereum. This is absolutely massive because unlike the lightning network on Bitcoin, we actually have multiple teams deploying different technology on top of Ethereum and they're all here and they're all being used. We have multiple approaches and technology that is literally being used today and it is growing every single day with new projects putting their hands up saying we're interested in adapting this technology to our solutions. First, we have rollups. So Loopring Exchange has had ZK rollups running since early this year. This gives the exchange a per second load of around 500 transactions per second. The Synthetics Exchange has recently done an optimistic rollups demo, which demonstrated how the new setup can actually reduce Oracle update latency by 37.5 times and exchange latency by 75 times. Wowzers. And Stark wears Stark X just did a demo of how it would be possible to trustlessly onboard to the Ethereum mainnet, 1.3 million accounts. Essentially, this was demonstrating how an entire subreddit, the size of Fortnite BR, can actually be brought into the Ethereum ecosystem. By the way, this demo that they did, it created no network congestion in the process. It was done in a 12 hour period while only using 2.5% of the network. Gas prices used were on average 30% below the average gas price during that time. Now for a comparison, doing the same thing directly on Ethereum without using StarkX would have consumed the entire network for four and a half days. Rollups work, they're here and they're being used right now. In addition to rollups, we now have two implementations of Plasma. We have OMG and we have Matic. So a Omise Go, now rebranded as simply OMG, has finally launched Plasma. It took them long enough, but it is finally here, allowing for thousands of cheap transactions per second on layer two, of course. After a very, very long wait, the mainnet is finally out. And what happened as soon as the OMG mainnet came out? It immediately integrated Tether on top of the OMG network which is incredibly significant since right now, Tether is one of the main reasons why Ethereum has seen a big rise in gas fees. It is the number one stable coin after all. So moving Tether to Plasma it is going to bring fees down on the main chain quite a bit. Now the effect won't be immediate. We need to see the technology rolled out across exchanges and all this stuff, but it is a really, really big move. Bitfinex, they have already signaled support for the OMG network which is absolutely critical because Bitfinex, as we know, is the company behind Tether. 
I would expect more exchanges to announce this integration very soon. And then of course there is Matic, which has just released its main net, which can scale to millions of transactions per second on a side chain tree architecture with up to 65,000 transactions per second on a single Matic side chain. Massive scaling, massive scaling, it's absolutely crazy. Also, the once hyped, but now kind of forgotten Raiden network, they have also launched their beta on the Ethereum mainnet and they can offer up to 1 million transactions per second on layer two. I want you to understand only one of the solutions that I just discussed would fundamentally change and scale Ethereum, but we don't have just one. We have about half a dozen different solutions, all of which work. Now, is there still more coding and work and stuff to be done in the background? A hundred percent there is. We got a lot of work to go still. We are still in the early phases of rolling out these scaling solutions, but they're here and they're not going anywhere. The future is looking very, very bright. M-O-O-N, that spells moon, and that is exactly where Ethereum is heading. By the way, if you're looking for a place to buy top cryptocurrencies like Omise Go and Ethereum, then check out Kraken. It has got low fees, high security, and an excellent uptime. Unlike some other popular exchanges, it stays up when the price of Bitcoin makes a big move. There is a link down below where you can learn more. Now, the next factor that I want to discuss with you is the value that Ethereum is quickly consuming. You see, right now, ERC-20 tokens, they're approaching around 50% of the total value stored on the Ethereum network. We are now in the process of witnessing a complete transformation in how value is stored and how it is transferred on Ethereum, and of course, what that actually means for the Ethereum network. We are seeing the value of Ethereum really expand beyond the Ether asset itself, and this is happening at a very, very rapid rate. 2020 has been fundamentally game-changing for this. Almost all major innovation happening in crypto right now, it is happening on Ethereum. We will be able to trustlessly and digitally represent fiat and gold and software licenses and equity and debt and derivatives and loyalty points and reputations ratings and so much more things people haven't even started to conceive of yet. All of that can be built on Ethereum. A lot of it already is being built on Ethereum. We're starting to see some of the first examples of these things coming out. We have gold tokens, which are becoming increasingly popular. We've had probably about two dozen or so gold tokens now. We have real estate, which is being tokenized and issued out on Ethereum. We have bonds being issued on Ethereum. And of course, the stablecoin market has absolutely exploded. More than $7 billion in stablecoins have been issued out on Ethereum, with almost $4 billion in new issuance over the past three months. Digital dollars... They are hot, hot, hot right now. And there is a lot of them as well. Obviously, the biggest ones are Tether. We see a lot of others like USDC and Paxos and DAI all coming into play. And now Ethereum is even sucking Bitcoin into its orbit. There are around half a dozen forms of wrapped Bitcoin now issued on top of Ethereum. Together, they account for around 5,000 Bitcoin which means there is five times as much Bitcoin right now wrapped and running on top of Ethereum than the entire Bitcoin Lightning Network. And there is twice as much Bitcoin than is locked in the Blockstream Liquid Network. It seems that Ethereum is the one making Bitcoin very, very useful. Bitcoin now has access to a wide range of decentralized finance products and is now actually backing things like the DAI stablecoin, creating what is really a Bitcoin standard of money. Very exciting innovation happening here. Ethereum is just sucking up all the value in the crypto economy right now. It is quite amazing to be witnessing, actually. And this trend, it is growing at an exponential rate. And along with this growing trend is actually the network itself, which is witnessing dramatic growth. 57% of the total Ethereum supply has not been moved on chain for over a year and 16% has not moved in over three years. Now that means that there is a lot of Ethereum hodlers out there and that that rate of Ethereum hodlers, it is picking up 
pace. The growth in Ethereum's number of daily active addresses is up big time this year, now at around 380,000 addresses per day. Ethereum is doing around 850,000 transactions per day at the moment. Now, for reference, that's around three times more than Bitcoin averages on a daily basis. Ethereum is also the only network besides Bitcoin that actually has a meaningful security market in terms of fees paid to secure the network. No one else is even close in this regard. The total number of addresses, it recently surpassed 40 million addresses with a non-zero balance. That number, by the way, is now closing in on 41 million, not that far off at the moment. So that's just the non-zero addresses, but also the big addresses. They've got a lot of Ethereum as well. There are almost 119,000 addresses which have 32 or more Ether. The number required, of course, for staking in ETH 2.0. This particular number has increased by around 14% since last year. The introduction of staking, when it comes online, it is going to dramatically drive demand for people to get ETH in their hands, both by those long-term retail investors and also the institutional holders like Grayscale. Grayscale, of course, has bought the equivalent of 50% of all newly mined Ethereum in 2020, so there's a lot of institutional interest coming in for Ethereum as well. Ethereum staking, in my opinion, is likely to be an economic event as big as or bigger than the Bitcoin halving in 2020. And then, of course, we might actually see the implementation of EIP-1559, which will slowly but surely bring fee burning for some transactions into Ethereum. Decentralized finance, obviously, that has been a massive story over the last year, and it has been crazily exploding on us. There are now 178,000 DeFi users, up from around 90,000 only five months ago, nearly doubling in five months. This chart from Dune Analytics shows the explosive growth of the DeFi sector and the users that are actually coming into take part in these products. And the products on offer, they just keep getting better all of the time. DYDX and Synthetics, they're offering margin trading in a totally decentralized fashion. Hot wallets like Argent are making accessing DeFi services super, super easy. And decentralized exchange protocols like Kyber or Aave, they're so damn easy to use. It's at this point, it's not even fair for legacy finance. It's just going to get bulldozered over and everyone's going to kind of forget, like, you guys used to do banking that way? That's ridiculous. And I haven't even mentioned, of course, enterprise adoption, which is really just a whole separate video in of itself. But players like Chainlink and Unibright, they are at the center of the eminent task force and the baseline protocol. Two major initiatives supported by some of the world's biggest companies with the intention of onboarding enterprises to the public Ethereum mainnet. Net. I'm not going to spend time on those particular topics here at the moment. I just did a video on the baseline protocol a few days ago, so go and check it out if you need to learn some more about it. But anyway, for all of these reasons and many, many more, actually, this is just, you know, we'd be here for an hour if I had got went through everything. But for all these reasons and more, I believe that Ether criminally undervalued at the moment. In fact, when staking comes online, I expect that we're going to see some very large price moves for Ether. Now, in terms of investing, obviously, you can just buy Ethereum directly. It's my second biggest crypto holding. It makes up a pretty significant port, around 20% of my cryptocurrency portfolio. Or, of course, you can go and sniff out some of the cryptos, which will be fundamental to success of the ecosystem, like Chainlink, OMG, Kyber, Synthetics, Aave, Unibright, Matic, and a good handful of other projects. And yes, I know, I know, ETH 2.0, it still needs to happen. And while all this Layer 2 stuff is really, really nice, come on, Vitalik, man, what's up? Let's actually see this upgrade get rolled out. Because this upgrade, it's not just about scaling. Scalability, that's a hot topic. We can really understand, okay, big numbers, better scaling, all that stuff. But... We're bringing in things like WebAssembly, new coding languages, staking, which is going to be massive for economics, and a whole bunch of other features, which are all needed really to be um, seeing Ethereum go to the next level. And look, it has to happen sooner or later because, yes, the competition is hungry. There are so many blockchains out there, all with an eye on Ethereum's number two spot right now. Some of those competitors are faster. Some of them have better tech. And they'll even do your laundry for you. That's a good blockchain right there. But none of them 
None of them are even close to Ethereum in terms of its network effect and everything it has going for it. I'm confident that ETH 2.0 will be successfully rolled out in the coming years. But every day that ETH 2.0 doesn't happen is the day that those competitors close the gap. But when ETH 2.0 is fully activated, it will make most of the competitors kind of irrelevant. Um, look, there's going to be some smart contract platforms that are going to find their niches, players like Cardano or Tezos, right? But the majority of these smaller cap smart contract platforms, they're going to be crushed. I mean, look, maybe it's an unpopular opinion, but you have to think about it. Some of these guys, they have had operational main nets for a couple of years now, and almost nothing has happened. There's a totally irrelevant amount of users, almost no dApps built on it. There's almost, you know, no exchange support for the dApps, which are built on it. No one really cares about a lot of these things. Maybe the number go up, but that's about it. Personally, looking at the Ethereum ecosystem and understanding where it is going to be in, you know, five or even 10 years, it's incredibly exciting. It's one of the reasons why I talk about Ethereum so much, because I look at it and go, ah, this, this, this is why I got into crypto. Everything is primed for explosive price appreciation for Ethereum as well, aside from just all the general awesomeness that is kind of building up here. Look, if Bitcoin's going to $100,000, then Ethereum's probably going to go to $5,000 in the next bull. It might sound like a crazy number, but I certainly see Ethereum going back over $1,000. That, that's a near certainty in my mind. Probably one of the easiest plays in crypto right now, along with Bitcoin, which is why Bitcoin is number one and Ethereum is number two in my portfolio. Oh yeah, sure, it's not 100x gain, but it's still pretty gosh darn nice, isn't it? That is why I'm continuing to buy more Ether at these prices, because in my humble opinion, Ethereum, undervalued, Big time. Stack, ETH, and chill, my friends. So your question for today, do you believe that Ethereum is currently massively undervalued? Or do you think that some other crypto is going to come along and eat Ethereum's lunch? Maybe I've just been hitting that hopium bong a bit too hard. <laughs> Let me know down below in the comment section. As always, I massively appreciate your time. So thank you so much for coming and listening to this dude talk about cryptocurrencies on the internet. Hope you're having a freaking awesome day out there, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Keep it classy, everyone. Long live the blockchain and peace out till next time.